I'm Birgit O'Connor and welcome to Waves and Water. In this program, we're going to be covering several different demonstrations. I've simplified the process so you'll be able to feel successful when painting. We don't have to capture all the details. It's really about the essence and allow the viewer into the painting. So we're going to cover still water, waves, how to hold your brush, the pressure that you're applying, water to color blends, wet sand, and multiple other things. So let's go back to the studio and let's get started. And here I'm trying to take advantage of both the wet and dry surface, allowing the color to run to the edge of the dry area. Now I want to add some shadows into the clouds to give them more dimension. I'll randomly place color here and there. Then I'll take my paper towel again and start lifting areas out. I want the combination of hard and soft edges. As I'm working on the shadows, I'm going to add a few different colors to make it more interesting. I'm going to take a little burnt sienna and add it into the French ultramarine blue along with a little permanent alizarin crimson and mix that together with burnt sienna. The combination of these colors really work well together. I'll also vary the combinations a little to make it more natural. Invite the viewer into your painting. It doesn't need to look like a photograph. You're capturing the essence. And if it is like a photograph, you've told the whole story and left out the mystery. I'm randomly going to apply a color here and there. And as I move closer into the foreground, I'm going to switch over to my number 20 round civil synthetic blend. So I have larger areas of land. I want to leave enough of the background color in between the patches of land to help give me the impression of the reflection of the sky. Then before it dries, I'm going to take my number 30 natural hairbrush and soften some of the edges out. This will help me create more of the illusion of grass without painting every detail because the color will want to run into these areas. And to make it more interesting, I might want to change the color a little or add to it. Here I'll add a combination of the burnt sienna and burnt umber into the drying color. And as it dries, I can add even a little more water and use the backwashes to my advantage. Because the edges of those little puddles will look like grass too. I'm going to use my number 20 Sable Synthetic Blend, put some water on my palette, and then take a little French Ultramarine Blue and mix it with a little permanent sap green. This makes a nice ocean color. Then I'll test my mixture to see if this is what I want. I can see that it's leaning more towards the blue and I actually want it a little more green. So I'll add a little more permanent sap green. What's interesting about the combination of these two colors is that they're sedimentary and they like to separate, which can help add texture and give more of the effect of water. As you can see, the color likes to settle in the tooth of the paper, adding to that choppy effect of the surface. Now if I didn't want it this way and wanted it more smooth, I could always use a hair dryer because it can keep the color moving and homogenizes it. By adding a few shadows here and there, it helps to change it up a little and give it more dimension. One thing I'd really like you to notice is how I'm constantly rotating my painting to find the balance. It also helps to make some areas more accessible. It doesn't always have to be right side up. In fact, many times I paint upside down because it can make some areas more accessible and you're looking at the overall painting, not just one area. This is another reason why I don't like to attach my paper to a board, because it's much more flexible this way. Now for just a few more details. 
I might want to add some rocks on the beach. So I'll take a little burnt umber and add that to my color mix. Then with my number 8 round Zable Synthetic Blend, I'll just place a few of them here and there. And if the color looks just a little too dark for this soft painting, I can just take a paper towel and lift some of the color out. Then before I do anything else, I want to take one of my magic mats and put it on top of the painting and see what I think. Oh. 